I don't think I've ever been this lucky while grinding out any ship in the game. The Renown, the new tier 6 British battlecruiser, went insanely well for me. I actually managed to average 165k in a tier 6 battleship. Over only two games, keep in mind, so it is a very, very small sample size. Like I said, I got lucky. So we're going to look at those two games. And the reason I only played two is that I had enough XP then to just research the tier 7. So <laughs> it went pretty well. It went pretty well. And if you know me and six gun battleships, well, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan. So I don't really know what happened here, other than that I just got lucky, or maybe I'm wrong about the other six-gun battleships. Can debate that for a while, but this ship is surprisingly good. I think the battle cruiser dispersion really, really helps these ships. It's so much better than the 1.5, 1.6 Sigma that this line has all the way up. Notice we're also running brisk, so anytime we're undetected, yeah, we're getting a nice speed boost. And of course, there's also just a normal speed boost consumable. So this is a fast flanking ship with pretty good accuracy and some decent overmatch for the tier as well with 380s. And the nice part, at least with this tier 6, is we have a pretty good reload to go along with that. And yeah, at these tiers, that can happen. Omaha's just explode. <laughs> Which is part of why this happened to go so well. Some of those angled dev strikes were definitely coming through for the Renown. Personally though, if we can talk about overmatch for a second and accuracy, I'd rather not dev strike him there, to be honest. I'll take it. But I'd rather the game reward me when people are broadside rather than when they're angled and then I just get this amazing, weird overmatch dev strike. Um, I'd rather not get those dev strikes. I'd rather get the ones that happen when people are broadside. And there's gonna be some of those that happen in this game and the next one as well, where I'm left wondering, okay, why did that broadside salvo not really do much? But that's okay. That's battleships, that's game design that we don't have to talk about this time. We do have torpedoes on this ship and we actually have quite a few torpedoes. A Mistake that's going to come back to bite me in a little bit is I forgot these lower tier ones actually have more than one torpedo per side. If you saw my previews on especially the tier 10, you'll know that they get one torp per side and they do around 30,000 damage at high tier, which is absolutely insane. And that was what was going through my head here in this game is that I have that one torp and I should use it. But in actuality, we have more. We have, I think, four torps per side with this ship. It's pretty nice. Um, and aside from this one, I've already started my grind on the tier seven. That one feels a little bit worse if I can spoil it just a little bit, probably because I got so lucky here. But the nine guns is nice, but the reload suddenly gets really, really long on the main guns. Unfortunately though, these battleships do come with a downside, or battle cruisers, I should say, and that's the armor. There are a lot of overmatchable parts to this ship, and you can take a lot of damage quite quickly. The HP pool is pretty fine here. We don't get a super heal until much later. But yeah, some of those overmatching salvos from other battleships at the tier, they certainly can hurt. So in a position like this, where most of the enemy team is on this flank, yeah, it's, it's time to run. And that's really what you need to be constantly aware of in this ship. I have no idea how that missed, for example. <laughs> Uh, but you need to be aware that you're not going to be this tanking, dealing damage brawler ship most of the time. You're going to be the flanking ship, the ship trying to get damage when people go broadside, but you don't want to take sustained fire. The AA, although we have defensive fire, really isn't too special either. Like there too, for example. Why can't I do more damage to that Fuso? I'd rather not get the damage from that poor Omaha and I'd rather get the damage out of that foos. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I'll I'll talk about that in its own separate video sometime when I'm frustrated enough to actually make it. <laughs> but back to the back to the renown. I I think it's a decent ship overall. I really do. These two games are not going to be the norm out of this one. I would certainly say that. But we have to retreat here, and that's what's really nice about a ship like the renown. Unlike some of the other battleships at this tier. They're just so fast, these battlecruisers. Something like the Warspite, right? 
they're just really slow. Things like New Mexico, extremely slow, and also getting overmatched everywhere at this tier. So there's a lot of things to like about this Renown and about the line in general going up. I think that as far as frustrations go, there's not as many with this line when it comes to these mid-tier ships where you're dealing with overmatch anyway, and at least you do have some speed to actually get out of bad situations or even flank if you do find a good opportunity. I ran away for quite some time here that I cut out, and now that the enemy team kind of turned around to go back to spawn, it's important that I push again and don't just leave my guys who are going after the enemy's cap out to dry. As we're pushing forward, we're going to probably end up brawling these three battleships and i have to say i'm gonna make a mistake you'll you'll definitely see it you'll definitely see it so look forward to that but this ship can also push its way through some of these mistakes as well and that extra accuracy it's always going to be nice to have even though i'd rather have more volume of guns this extra accuracy is so valuable we were talking about this a little bit on stream today about the difference between sigma and and dispersion. Why are these ships so accurate in comparison to something like the Italian battleships with Alto have really bad Sigma? So the Sigma is about the same on Italian battleships and these. So why then are the British battlecruisers so much more accurate? And that just comes down to the actual dispersion ellipse, right? Sigma is the factor that says how likely is it that the shells will go to the center of the circle? Whereas the dispersion numbers talk about the absolute size of the circle. The British battlecruisers just have a small size circle, so it doesn't really matter as much if they don't always go to the middle of the circle, if that circle just happens to be very small. Unfortunately for the Italians, yeah, they got a pretty big circle to hit. <laughs> so that's why they're going to be a little bit rough. Although they did get a buff this patch, I will be looking at that in the future. Um, certainly the Colombo is an interesting topic when it comes to the shell swap time now. I still do think the Italians rely too much on Sansonetti. Every, every battleship, especially the destroyers, they just rely so heavily on Sansonetti. It's like they were designed around everyone having that commander on every single one of their Italian ships. It's, it's a little awkward. Keep in mind the angle that I'm taking here now that we're getting into this brawl, I want you to pay attention to that. Our bow is completely overmatchable by these guys, so that's why I'm trying to take an angle where they're more likely to shoot at my belt. Um, we do risk citadels, although, I mean, they're flat broadsides, so we're getting some pretty good hits as well <laughs> into that Texas. Um, but keep that in mind, that you want them to people to be shooting at your belt, and that way you can actually bounce things, assuming you're angling properly. And yeah, for some reason, the guy with four torpedoes on this side only launches one torpedo at the enemy repulse. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Don't worry. Don't worry. The, the Twitch chat made sure I knew that I had more torpedoes after this game. Don't you worry. But I still managed to win it. Kind of. Um, yeah, I got another salvo in and he didn't even die. So I'm not sure what's going on here. This game, I don't, I don't know how I'm not punished there. Maybe because I played so badly and misplayed so badly, Wargaming just hands out an olive branch say, okay, it's it's okay, little guy, I understand. You messed up, we're going to let you live. So I somehow live that, and we get 176k out of a tier 6 battleship in our very first game. On to the second game, which is honestly an incredibly strange one as well. Koningsbergs also tend to explode at this tier, right? So... Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna start two insane games with dev strikes on cruisers, are we? Uh, yeah, yes we are. Yes we are. So that is potentially not something you can be expecting as you're grinding through this ship. I don't think that's gonna happen all the time. But the speed is something you can rely on to hopefully dodge a little bit here. Um, we're gonna get pushed by this DD, and it's gonna be actually very difficult for him to get the Yolo Torps on if on us. Because we're so fast that we can turn around relatively quickly and hopefully he doesn't expect these torpedoes. But the speed is also something we can use to tank with. If we're fast enough, and especially at these tiers where people aren't as good, I would say, there's a lot of, there's more newer players. It's not their fault. Um, you can use some speed to throw off your opponent's shots and we'll be doing that throughout the rest of this game as well. And yeah, this poor, <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> YOLO rushing the battleship to torp him, and then you get torped instead by the battleship. That's, 
That's got, what, 2017 Turpits written all over it? Or 2016? When was that ship released, man? It's been so long at this point. Oh, man. Poor guy. We'll get a close quarters expert there even as well. Pushing back in, though, after dealing with him. And we're going to be pushing a little bit alone. But I'm okay with doing that since we've already taken out the DD. I have enough HP. I want to take an engagement on this flank since our team is doing all right. But there's some serious potential if they lose the other side of the map. And we get another Citadel. So it seems like Citadels are reigning in reasonably common with this ship. And it's a six-gun battleship. I don't like these traditionally. And yet we're doing a lot of damage throughout. And of course, it's a poor Koningsberg again. <laughs> Cruisers at this tier, man, they can definitely be a bit of a struggle to get through. Of course, once you get up to, especially tier 9, when you get those heals, they start to be a little bit of monsters, but getting to that point can be a bit of a pain. And yeah, we're going to take some focus fire here. So I'm going to turn out here. I know that I can't just sit here and tank these ships. So I have to risk a turnout. Fortunately for me, a lot of the enemy battleships are shooting HE at me, so we're getting lucky in that regard. Um, but it's important to recognize what your ship can and cannot do. If I'm in a secondary battleship, I'm probably not going to turn out. I don't want to take, or I don't want to risk, I should say, that massive salvo coming in if I turn. I want to stay stuck in in a situation like this and let my secondaries go to work on this Dallas, for example. We got a lot of light ships, including a DD around here, so it's really important to deal with the Dallas. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to do tons of damage to him yet. But you can see all this focus fire coming in, and we're really not shattering or bouncing much of it, especially the HE, we're really not shattering any of that. Unlike some of the other battleships at this tier, which are pretty hard to take down, like a Fuso, having next to no superstructure and having lots of pretty tanky armor, um, this this Renown is not that. <laughs> You'd have to watch out. You have to respect HE spam in this ship, but at least you're going to do some okay damage back in return. The turret traverse, of course, if you've been looking at that throughout this video, it's pretty slow. So that is something to keep in mind. Although if you're playing mid-tier battleships, you're probably used to that at this point. If you have big guns that overmatch at the tier, you're probably used to pretty slow turret traverses. And it can be made up for with rudder shift, which this ship has a reasonable rudder. I wouldn't call it super amazing or ultimate quick, but it can be all right. And since we don't actually have access to propulsion mod in the upgrades, I'll talk about that after this game, but we actually can take rudder shift or we can take the uh, tankiness damage control upgrade where we take less damage from fires, which can also be pretty useful since we're not having that super heal. As we go up the tiers though, um, at tier nine and 10 on this line, I will probably be dropping a lot of those fire reduction flags and uh, upgrades just because we have a super heal. And the ship is so focused on concealment and not taking sustained fights that Fires aren't really something that we have to deal with too much of with these ships. We bounced off that Koningsberg, and then we get the uh, Pitadel, right? The last hit for almost no damage, and it is, of course, a Citadel. So, yeah, it looks good on the end score, but maybe not the most valuable Citadel of all time. Unfortunately, we aren't quite able to take this Dallas out before he manages to get our Icarus. But we do clean it up, and that's four kills already. So, again, a pretty good game. Not the damage yet that we're looking for, but we're getting up there in kills. Although I'm still running away. You notice our team has actually done a pretty good job on the D flank, but we still need to run. Afuso is a little bit scary, and I'm really not sure how to deal with this Tiger either. It's a little bit tricky out here since I don't have a ton of support. And of course, HE spam can wear me down pretty quickly if I get lit on multiple fires. I'm pretty concerned about being broadside to the Fuso as well at this point. Since we do have an exposed citadel, I have to be a little bit careful there, and that's why I'm always tending to be in this third person view or this very zoomed out view anytime I'm not shooting. I want to be aware of when that Fuso turns to shoot at me. I might almost even select him as a target here in a little bit just to see where his bow is pointing on the minimap. Um, that's something we can definitely use to our advantage to know if he's looking at us or not. Somehow, yeah, I don't know how we had a perfect dispersion on our back turrets and then our front two turrets missed completely this tiger. I don't know how that happens, but uh, good old battleship RNG is alive and well with this ship, don't you worry. 
To talk a little bit about the ammo types, at least on the Renown, and it probably will be pretty similar going up the tiers, we have short fuse AP. I think that might be why we were dealing so much damage to those cruisers, or one of the reasons. Less opportunity for overpens if the shells arm a little quicker. Although that does mean that we're probably not going to be citadeling battleships quite as much, especially if there's some thick spaced armor in there at some of these lower tier ships. Um, as far as HE though, I really hadn't been using it all that much, at least at these lower tiers since it only really has a 34% fire chance, which is fine, I guess, but it really is those higher tier ships that start to have that amazing 50-60% fire chance that you can really start to rely on for getting a lot of consistent fires. I really don't want to be relying on HE here since we do have overmatch and the AP does do some pretty solid damage. Unfortunately, Broadside Fuso, like I mentioned, <laughs> I'd rather do the damage to a Broadside Fuso than an angled Omaha at 15 kilometers, for example. Uh, if, it were, if it were up to me, right, I would want that consistency there for both myself and that poor Omaha who died too young. <laughs> poor guy. HE Fuso, yeah, we're getting, we're getting a little bit lucky here, certainly on more than one front. It's not just myself and the decisions I'm making, but... It's mid-tier, right? There's probably a lot of newer players here, and that'll secure us our Kraken. We already got a high caliber and a Confederate this game, getting all the medals, of course. I got lucky. I got lucky. What else can I say? I don't think if I continued to play the Renown that it would continue to go this well. I think that it's a good ship, and I think that it'll perform well as a tier 6, but I don't think it can sustain this level of performance. Tiger going broadside again. I was really hoping that we'd actually get some bigger damage in here. We just aren't. Fortunately for us, we do have some friendly teammates alive who are interested in capping. You'll notice the enemy team is still ahead on points here, even though we've been mopping up this flank reasonably well. Games like this are rare, but they can happen, and they're a lot of fun when there's these close games that really come down to the wire here. We get a little bit fortunate though, that our teammates are so interested in capping since a lot of these games do get out of hand when you lose your destroyers, right? You lose your DDs, your cruisers, your battleship players just kind of zone out and don't actually go for the cap zones and then you just lose on points. That's a great way for solo warriors to happen too, by the way, if you're on the enemy team and you got that huge points advantage um, and then everybody goes for kills and you just manage to run away and live. That's, that's how a lot of solo warriors uh, tend to happen, at least, at least in my experience. So I am pretty confident here that this Tiger isn't going to do too much damage to me. I'm not terribly concerned about giving this much of an angle here. I don't think he can sit it on me. And of course, I am trying to take him out while still trying to get this cap. I would probably be trying to close the distance, try to use those torpedoes, if I wasn't just trying to stall out this cap. It's not a huge deal if I left the cap, but it's little things like that that I have to be thinking of in the back of my mind as this game is coming to a close, since the enemy team is still going to win on points if nothing changes. And unfortunately, we aren't quite able to finish him off there, and he goes dark behind the island. Um, a little while later, though, as we're just capping things out, he does come out. He probably had to at that point, considering we did manage to deal with the rest of his teammates while he was hiding back there. Well played to the Tiger, though, honestly, for staying alive for so long. Um, our guys just managed to do a little better on the opposite flank. And there you go, 150k in this one. So averaging out to 160k damage, grinding up a tier 6. And yeah, our XP gain was so insane that those were the only two games that I needed to play. And I unlocked the tier 7. So yeah, that one went pretty well. Uh, shockingly so when it comes to the Renown grind. Uh, when it comes to the equipment, I am running steering gears here. I wasn't sure which one, since they can both be valuable on this ship, but uh, I did end up going with steering gears since it is such a good flanking ship. But damage control system can work too. That's why I wasn't quite so sure uh, when recording this video. Uh, but aiming systems mod one, definitely something you want to go for. Even over turret traverse, even if it is a little slow, I think it's valuable to get that extra accuracy. Everything else seems pretty reasonable, I'd say. Uh, the commander being over on the Rook already, we're already well on our way with this grind. Um, but I had a 21 point commander, which isn't necessarily the most fair. Um, but I'd say a solid 10 point commander would be Gunfeeder, Brisk, and then Adrenaline Rush, and Concealment. 
all very valuable skills. The gun feeder gets a little better at higher tiers once your HE gets a little better. Brisk is just so good all the way through because you really, really have great concealment. That you, means you can use Brisk almost all the time and uh, use it to flank with these very powerful guns, even over something like Grease the Gears, as you can see. Maybe I'll give up basic survivability uh, to take Grease the Gears in the future, or I don't know, what else? Maybe Improved Repair Party or Super Heavy AP? <laughs> uh, don't, don't take these guys. Even with a Super Heal, it can work with the Super Heal at high tier, but don't take these. It's just... It's not worth it. If you get a devastating strike, 7.5% isn't going to change that. 25% to fires and floods really hurts. Um, I, I don't think your salvo is going to be impacted that much. And same with Furious. It just means you want to be on fire, but then you're just going to get yourself burnt down and killed a little bit quicker. Uh, I think fire prevention is last, since you're not taking those sustained fights. We're wanting those bursty engagements. So it's less valuable in that case. So that's why concealment first and then probably emergency repair expert once you have a 14 pointer. That would be my recommendation, but uh, you can go with whatever you'd like. I've found that this works reasonably well. Um, I'm shocked though. Six gun battleships, I usually hate them and they usually hate me right back. Uh, but this time it went pretty well. So I guess we can always point to this as the one time that six gun battleships worked. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think about these German battle cruisers in the comments below. If you've been playing them, grinding them, uh, but it's going to be the weekend. That's going to be it for me this week. I'll see you guys next week and enjoy your weekend.